Hello and welcome to this Haas Tip of the Day. What I hold in my hand is the modern world, the result of thousands of years of manufacturing refinement. Okay, uh, a bit much? Maybe. This is actually a hub for our side mount tool changer arms. But what it represents is incredible. The fact that we can measure every feature on this part with near certainty allows us to machine perfect part after part. And those can be shipped all over the world where we know that they will fit into an assembly just as design. Part interchangeability and our modern assembly lines are only possible because of good machinists making and measuring, measuring good parts. Now in today's video, we opened up our toolbox and we pulled out some of our most basic hand measuring tools. Okay, okay. Some of our most basic handheld measuring tools and what's needed to use them. So stick around. Everything for me begins with my setup sheet. So check this out. I've got a block loaded up. Now if you're tightening up those tools by hand, These are the measuring tools that we're gonna take a look at today. And we're gonna spend most of our time on calipers and micrometers. If you work in a machine shop, this is what you have to master if you wanna progress in the trade. So we're gonna start with our trash bags. Uh, where else would we start a video on measuring tools, right? So let's take a look at the fine print. It says here that these bags are 1.1 mil or 27,9 UMs thick. Did I sound like a machinist when I read off those, those numbers? Uh, no, nothing I said sounded like a machinist. So can anyone tell me how thick these trash bags are in inches or in millimeters? There are still some industries here in the US that refer to one thousandths of an inch, 0 .001, as a mil. Uh, you might hear that term when measuring uh, the thickness of paint or a plating thickness or when measuring the thickness of plastic sheets or plastic bags. But as machinists, we don't use the term mill. It just doesn't sound right. We use the term thou, as in one one thousandths of an inch. Mill sounds too much like millimeter and it's just confusing. So we need to learn the slang of the machinist if we want to be understood. This is one inch, 1.0. This is 1.1 inch or one inch 100 thou. This is 1.15 inches or 1 inch 150 thou. This is 1.157 which is 1 inch 157 thou. And this is 1 inch 157 thou and 5 tenths. This is basic stuff but that just makes it all the more important to get right around the shop. In the same way that the thou is the base unit uh, for the way we talk in the inch system, the um is the base unit for the metric system. <laughs> okay, it looks like um, but don't call it that, okay? You'll sound really, really weird like I did just now. This is actually a lowercase Greek mu followed by a lowercase m. And this stands for micrometer in the metric system. One millionth of a meter or one thousandth of a millimeter. Now to avoid confusion between this micrometer and this micrometer, we just call one thousandth of a millimeter a micron. So 0 0.001 in the imperial system is one thou. 0 0.001 in the metric system is one micron. That means that these trash bags are 1.1 thou thick, uh, about 28 micron. That is how a machinist speaks, a thou and a tenth. Now these trash bags over here, three mil thick, which is three thou thick, or about 76 micron. Oh, this might be a great spot to mention that there are exactly 25.4 millimeters per inch. So we can use those numbers to convert from millimeters to inches or inches to millimeters. Well, now that we know the language of the machinist, thou and microns, we can move over to our yardstick. Now on this yardstick, the graduations come, uh, oh, a graduation is uh, just the line uh, that we measure to. Uh, on this yardstick, they come every one eighth of an inch. So one divided by eight equals 0.125 inches or 125 thou. 
here in the States, you've got to get really good at converting between fractions and decimals. So eighth of an inch, quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, and so on. Now for the metric meter stick, uh, the graduations come every millimeter. There are 10 millimeters in a centimeter and uh, 1,000 millimeters in a meter. Way over here on this meter stick, if we look right here, we could call this 58.5 centimeters or 585 millimeters, either way. So this is our meter stick, our yard stick, and it is not the most accurate measuring tool. Now our tape measures are only slightly better, but they're really useful uh, as machinists when rough cutting material. Right off the bat, I might think that this tape measure is broken. The end is all wobbly. Now, how accurate can that be? Not so fast. It's not broken. The end hook on a tape measure is supposed to move. The hook is slotted so it can slide on its rivets forward and back by the width of the hook. It can give accurate measurements while either pushing or pulling. Genius. <laughs> now, I know this is basic, but it's good, right? Every machinist needs to know this. Accurate measurements start with knowing your tools. Now, actually, over the last few years, I've seen more and more ads online that actually specifically ask that operators know how to use a tape measure. It's the basics. So, on an inch tape measure, the graduations are now coming every 1 16th of an inch. 1 divided by 16, 0 0.0625. 62 and a half thou. For metric tape measures, the graduations are still coming every, every millimeter. Uh, no big change there. Pretty consistent. Here, we start getting into some machinist tools that are accurate enough to make some pretty decent measurements. I'll often carry around one of these in my shirt pocket. Now, a lot of us got scolded uh, at our first machinist jobs for calling this a ruler. The old guys will chime in and say, a ruler is a king or a queen. This is a scale. Uh, what's funny is that these typically aren't scales anymore either. Back in the day, our grandfathers would hand draw prints using architect or engineer scales to get the proportions correct when not drawing parts life-sized. When a drawing is the same size as the real part, we call that scale one-to-one. -one. If the drawing is half the size of a real part, the scale would be one to two. Now, here are my grandfather's old scales with different ratios. The graduations on them vary based on the scale we want to draw the part at. The machinist rulers or scales that, that I use today uh, typically have a precision edge on them, and they're just called steel rules. These typically come with graduations of 1 32nd and 1 64th of an inch, while metric steel rules will go down to millimeter and one half millimeter graduations. So our, our rulers that we've looked at have graduations all over the place. Eighth inch, 16th, 32nd, and 64th graduations. And this can get really confusing. We've just gotten used to it here in the States and we've gotten really good at converting fractions into decimal inch values. Which brings me to one of my favorite uh, machinist quotes. Instead of our engineers and machinists thinking in eighths, sixteenths, and thirty-seconds of an inch, it is desirable that they should think and speak in tenths, hundredths, and thousands. This was written by Sir Joseph Whitworth way back in 1857. In fact, he coined the term thou, one thousandths of an inch, way back in 1844. Thank you, sir. So, uh, the steel rule that I tend to carry most often in my pocket is actually a, a decimal inch version. It'll have the 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 inches on the one side, which match up well with our decimal inch digital micrometers that we were looking at, and our Haas control, which doesn't list things in 64ths, it lists things in decimal inches. So no more scant or heavy 64ths. Uh, this is by far my favorite steel rule. Now, if you wanna look like a real pro when using a steel rule, be sure to set it on its edge when measuring. You'll get much more accurate and repeatable measurements. By placing the rule on its edge, we avoid parallax, where the measurement appears to change on us based on the direction we view the graduations from. Each of these measuring instruments has a different 
accuracy, a precision that a trained person can be expected, trusted to hold with one of these instruments. Often, but not always, the accuracy or precision of an instrument is the same as the smallest graduation on that tool. So our yardstick had eighth inch graduations and these calipers here, uh, which, which have to be the most versatile tool on this table, have a resolution down to five tenths, while these dial calipers here have a, a smallest graduation resolution of one thou. Now, in reality, I don't use calipers for, for numbers that small. Uh, once I go down below a couple of thou or a thou, uh, I'll start using micrometers. So that's just typically what we do. Why, why push the limits? To be used accurately, uh, these need to be zeroed out with each use, held square to the part, and used with just the right amount of force, not too much. We'll wipe the reference surface with a lint-free cloth, and we might wipe that same surface with a, a drop of micrometer oil. We'll open and close the calipers to make sure nothing is dragging or catching. And if the calipers drag while opening or don't fully close, the calipers might have been damaged and they'll need repair. We'll wipe clean the measuring faces and close them snugly. We can hold the calipers up to a light to make sure there is no gap between the jaws. If there is, clean them again or get them repaired. With the jaws closed, we'll origin or zero out the calipers. I'll open and close them a few times at this point to make sure I get zero repeatably. We can zero out dial calipers by rotating the bezel and snugging the set screw. These calipers are like the Swiss army knife of machinist tools. They can be used to measure inside features, outside features, depths, or a step or a shoulder. I have five things for you to watch out for when using calipers as you gain experience. One, don't push too hard and keep the part as deep in the jaws as possible. It's a good idea to hand a new machinist a gauge block or a standard to practice with uh, when they're getting a feel for how hard to press. If you don't get the number on the standard, gauge block or pin, then you are pushing too hard or too lightly. Number two, make sure that your calipers are square to the part that's being measured. If they're tilted, you could end up with errors. Number three, watch out for the radiuses left by tools. These can throw off your numbers. This part has a 10 thou inside corner radius, which can affect my values. In this case, I just rotate the calipers to allow the notch on the depth measuring face to avoid that inside radius. Number four, these calipers are great for measuring IDs, inside diameters of holes, but not small holes. When a hole is smaller than four millimeters diameter, 157 thou, these, these inside diameter jaws aren't gonna fit cleanly and your numbers are gonna be off. You'll usually show the hole being smaller than it actually is. This happens just because of the, the physical design of all calipers, even the good ones. So for really tiny holes, you're probably better off going with a, a small bore gauge or gauge pins of some kind. And number five, if you're using a dial caliper, uh, make sure that you're looking at the needle from straight on. If you're looking at it from the side, we'll get parallax error, like we saw earlier with the steel rule. Once you're getting some good measured numbers with your calipers, we can try some advanced caliper tricks, like coming up with the center to center distance between two holes. By zeroing out your calipers on the ID of a hole, you can then easily check the center to center distance between holes of that same diameter. This makes reverse engineering some parts go really quickly. This little trick is why I prefer digital calipers over, over dial. That and the fact that we can change them from inch to metric quickly. And they look great in a holster.